Hey everyone, welcome back to the Vintage Super League. Uh, I'm here with Rich Shea, who we just saw take a kind of rough loss against Steve Menendian. Yeah, these things happen. I think I could have played that third game better. Um, yeah, I think the main decision point hinged on a... So he let Thoughtseize resolve on turn one. He could have mental misstepped it, but he chose right. not to. And then you right. ended up taking the mental misstep over Force of Will or Wear Tear, or I guess Mox, but the Mox I don't think is much of a consideration there. No, I, I should have taken the Wear Tear. That was just a misplay. Um, uh, a misstep, I, if you will. <laughs> well, I, I really wanted, yes, that was in fact a, a mental misstep on my part. Um, I should have taken the Wear Tear, and um, my thought was that I really needed that Brainstorm to resolve, but I don't think there was any way he could have prevented it from resolving short of keeping the mental mist up and then drawing a fluster storm. So um, that was just uh, poor sequencing on my part. Yeah, it ended up working out kind of tough where you, you had a brainstorm resolve, but then you know the, you had the, the nightmare scenario of having to put two cards back, no way to shuffle them, and then wear tear going after one of your crucial third mana source. Right. I should have... There are a lot of ways I could have played that better. If I had taken the wear tear, um, I would have been able to uh, keep the mocks on the table. Or, because I knew that he had wear tear, I could have cast Brainstorm off of the orchard. And right. then I wouldn't have uh, had the mocks get uh, shattered. Yeah. Though, by, by the time uh, the wear tear went on the stack, it didn't matter whether you forced the wear tear or forced his mentor. Either way, your force was going to trade for his force. Right. So, so that, right. that, I don't think, played out any differently. No, no matter it, which I, I was already far too far behind at that point. Um, I think the problem is that I was viewing wear tear as tear. Right. And I completely overlooked the shatter mode of it. So I was thinking that he'll target my oath, I'll mental misstep it, but that will happen later. Right now, I just want to make sure this brainstorm resolves. And it uh, completely went over my head that there's this other shatter mode built into the <laughs> card. And uh, I, I haven't played this oath much. I got in three games of testing yesterday. I basically asked Greg Fenton for his list, and um, I played it. The list was fine, but the list would have gotten me there. But what I couldn't ask Greg for was his years of experience playing the deck. <laughs> um, and no, I played that badly. Well, it happens. Uh, you are still in contention for a playoff spot, or a postseason spot, I guess is what we're calling it, if you, if you go 2-0. Oh. I'll make every endeavor to do so. <laughs> I have a feeling that you may uh, try to stop me from doing that. Well, <laughs> we'll see. I, I have less games under my belt with the deck that I'm playing than you did with Oath, uh, or at least with the configuration yeah. of the deck that I'm playing. So, I'm uh, looking forward to finding out what that is. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Like, like I said in the chat earlier, I'm playing a couple cards in my main deck that haven't been played in any of the decks in any of the seasons of the Vintage Super League. So, hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if that was a wise idea or not. <laughs> I, I know that there are a lot of people on the Mana Drain who are really, really hoping someone will play humans this time. So I think yeah. if that's your choice, you'll make a lot of people happy. Well, we'll, we'll see. Uh, Ephro's going to find out in, in about an hour here. Or... All right, so let's take a look at uh, who's playing next round. We've got uh, Kai against Tom Martell here. Mm -hmm. And uh, both uh, Pro Tour champions, of course, uh, <laughs> Kai many times over. And they're, they're both kind of near the uh, back of the pack. So this is a really big match for Martel in terms of last place implications. And, you know, Kai's technically still in the hunt for a, for a postseason spot. Yeah, that's, that's good. I, I like to, you know, last season these came down to the wire, and I'm hoping this will as well. They've both selected the powerful TBD archetype. So, <laughs> um, you know, that's a pretty solid deck. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes. I think um, Tom really doesn't want to get knocked out here. No, no. Tom's had his ups and downs with when it comes to the Vintage Super League. But, uh, you know, when it, when, it, when it really comes down to brass tacks, he, he wants to keep playing and he wants to win this match. So I, I, I would, be, I'm, would be surprised if Tom uh, went out without a fight. Absolutely. And then, uh, uh, we also have Kai, who started out not winning a game in his like his first, I think, his first nine games, he just he just lost before uh, winning his last two rounds. 
Well, so he's not called the juggernaut for nothing, and he's been battling back, and I wouldn't expect anything less of him. Yeah, and uh, it should be an interesting matchup. I actually, uh, I know what these gentlemen are playing, so it, it, it'll be quite, quite the combo rific match since uh, they're, they're both looking to kill their opponent pretty quickly here. We're going to see their hands in a second. And there we have it. We have <laughs> Doomsday against Belcher. Now, we actually saw this very matchup, and uh, you were playing the Doomsday end of it earlier in the season, didn't we? Yeah, I, I lost to Randy playing Belcher with uh, Doomsday, though I, I do think that if you know you were playing against Belcher, Doomsday is one of the, I think, better decks for that matchup, just because it's it's fast, has duresses, and has Force of Will, but, I mean, the Belcher right. deck is super fast, and sometimes it just kills you. Absolutely. It looks like Tom's hand here is about as much as one could hope for. He has that duress, he has a Force, and um, it looks like you can use Vamp Tutor to set up his combo fairly quickly. Yeah, Tom's hand is, is very good. He can force pitching the Lab Maniac, which you don't need. I mean, you can still kill with Tendrils. Then Duress, and then uh, Vamp Pro, like Lotus or Ritual. And if he draws a second land at some point in this, he sets up a Doomsday kill very quickly. Yeah, that's true. Whereas Kai's hand, not the best hand I've ever seen. It doesn't do anything. So yeah. we'll probably be seeing a new hand from Kai. Yeah, I would imagine so. One of the Belcher's deck's problems is struggling to get the first, you know, one to two mana on the board, and hands like this are exactly, you know, emblematic of that. Though I think Kai said he was going to add a, a couple Simeon Spirit Guides to his deck to, to help with that, so we'll see if that ended up happening. So now Kai's hand could in theory make two mana, but then have no follow-up. I, I don't know, do you keep that hand? I I don't love that hand, but it I guess it's well, the problem is it doesn't if you do anything. yeah, it first of all doesn't do anything, and second of all, if you have to imprint force in order to maybe try and cast time twister, you're left with no no backup. And I mean, you don't know what Tom's playing, but a lot of decks have force of will in them, and uh, being dead to force of will is kind of unfortunate. It, it is Kai's deck can throw away its force; it can't do anything now. No, it looks like Kai is mulling to oblivion here. Yeah, you probably keep this three-card hand because I think it's better, so. better than two, but it's not good. It's not ideal. So do you run out the preordain, or do you hope for the uh, first turn, well, second turn Lotus into diminishing returns here? I would. My guess is you would want to wait, even though you're, you're a pretty low percentage either way. But yeah, I think the fact that you have a draw seven in your hand means that your best out is to just try and draw Lotus and draw seven cards. Because now there's like nothing you can preordain into that does anything. And of course, Let's Kai see. also is now. Actually, Chris points out in the chat that Kai shouldn't play any cards this match. Tom might think Kai's on like dredge or something, because now now uh, Tom knows for sure what Kai's playing. That's true. That's true. Well, it it takes away all the doubt here. Um, so right, Kai keeping a ponder. He's going off. Uh, <laughs> well. All right, this, this will add to getting to threshold, I guess. Yeah, I mean, Tom technically has to draw a land in order to, to really get going, but you've got to think he's got tons of time here based on, uh, you know, what Kai's doing and or how little Kai's going to be doing. Right, and it looks like he's going to get perfect information here. You'll see that ponder and uh, also draw into a lotus petal. Yeah, Lotus Petal was not bad. It's not the second land for Gush, but it's a mana source, and given that you're pretty safe to go off in a couple turns here, it would be pretty hard for Tom to miss. I mean, worst comes to worst, he can, like, vamp for Ancestral, but I don't even think that he necessarily needs to do that. I would probably just draw for my turn on turn two. If you draw a land, you set up a Doomsday Kill next turn. If you draw, or actually this turn, because you have the Lotus Petal, and if you draw, a, like, a spell, there's a lot of spells you could cast, too. I, I like that. I think... Drawing a land would be great for Tom. Drawing a, a spell might be good, depending on what it is. I, Tom's in very good shape here now. Yeah, well, he, it turns out having a good hand against someone who mulligan the threes... Yeah, well, he's having a hand good. is good here. Yeah. Um, it's more than Kai has. Yeah. At this point, because you, did, you missed on this draw step, I probably would just vamp for Ancestral now. You're you're a land away from from winning with Doomsday, because if you just play Doomsday then cast Gush, you even already have the Lab Maniac. You can just get like 
Lotus, Ancestral, Gitaxian Probe, and then, then you'll, you know, it doesn't matter what the other two cards are. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So what does Kai need to draw here? I guess you could draw Academy. I mean, he needs to draw the Academy. Yeah. If Kai drew Academy and then drew Belcher, Belcher, after Tom forces the first one, maybe Kai's got a shot. But I don't think Tom's going to give him very, very many turns here. No, I, I don't think he will. I guess you could get Lotus and then untap, just go Lotus Doomsday past the turn. And then okay. Kai has one turn to draw something and you, you set, you've set up a kill with like Ancestral, Dark Ritual, Land, uh, and Gush to, to, fuel mentor, or to Fuel Maniac. So actually getting Lotus is, is fine here. What do you think about getting Underground Sea? I guess they both do the same thing. Yeah, Underground Sea. Actually, actually, no, you're right. Underground Sea is even better. You just play Underground Sea, uh, Doomsday Gush, and then you win. So. Yeah. Um, underground Sea, Doomsday. He can gush. And he can get the Lotus in that gush. He could get uh, Lotus Ancestral. Yeah. If he gushes, he just gets Lotus Ancestral, uh, a Mox, and then like a Gitaxian Probe, and then right. and then he already has the Lab Maniac. So right, yeah. So it looks like he just has the win here with Force Backup. Yeah, there's and there's a ton of different stacks that win in the game too. He, you don't even have to list like <laughs> you know just one. There's there's I'm sure like Tendrils kills and, and everything. Well, Kai did mold a three, but he is actually just dead here. Yeah, he got the C. And it should do it. I would imagine so. It's always tricky, though. I mean, I, I played Doomsday, you know, the first trimester, and uh, it's a it's a tense card to play. You cast Doomsday, and you're you know you're just like ah, I can't misclick. It's just you obviously have won the game ex until unless you click wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you're your, and you see your whole deck, and it's like when you click on a card it like moves the rest of the deck so i just like click wait 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 click wait 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 but yeah i've i've had uh i know just in testing i've lost a game to that with uh, dig through time because when you click on a card it moves yeah. everything else um and then it makes it hard for you to execute the rest of the spell yeah and i think uh in this particular case tom is going to be fine you also have to like make sure you put it in the right order it's a lot easier you know, playing playing physical cards because you can pull out the five you want and then put them in the order you want. You, you can't, well, you can misclick in real life, but it's a little harder. Yeah. Real life vintage is great. Yeah. Um, I, I like vintage online too, honestly. There's some things that make it a lot easier. There's no, no shuffling, for example. Like not shuffling off of fetch lands is pretty nice. So. Yeah, I, I went oh, to a, a, a real life vintage tournament this past weekend. It was a lot of fun. One of the things I really liked about it was being able to sit across from my opponent, have a nice chat. I got to, people had awesome looking beta power, altered cards. I really, that's one of the aspects I really enjoy about a uh, paper vintage, real life vintage. You get to uh, yeah. meet people, see their decks. A lot of vintage players put a lot of care and time into how their cards look, what they do with them, and that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I miss playing live vintage. I have not played live vintage in a couple of years now, and uh, I have not dusted off the cards in a while. I'm going to try to at some point. But all right, Lab Maniac off of Black Lotus Ancestral Recall, Mox and Sapphire, wins. and Gitaxian Probe. So it was a quick win for Tom, or I guess more like a quick loss for Kai. Yes, uh, I wouldn't expect a ton of sideboarding from either side. The, the these are the matchups that. Uh, you know, kind of these decks are built to, to be good against just like the general force of will matchup. Right. But uh, I do know that Tom was talking about playing some number of Null Rod and Mind Break Traps. So th those are, um, <laughs> you know, if I did list the top two cards against the Belcher deck, I think those would be the top two. Oh, those maybe Sto Stony really... Silence being Null Rod, so. <laughs> yeah, those are both very powerful cards against getting Belched. Yeah. Um. So... Of course, on the draw, Norrod is not as good as Mind Break Trap because sometimes you're dead way before you can cast it. But uh, it is still one of the most effective cards, especially in a deck that has Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, Black Lotus, a couple ways to accelerate it out. Uh, I agree. I think what makes the Belcher deck so scary is that it can just have these absurd hands that just push right through all sorts of counter magic and win on the first turn. 
Um, I think a lot of these games are going to depend on what Kai's hand gives him. Obviously that game, it didn't do a lot for him, but uh, it's certainly capable of extremely powerful things. Yeah, and as we saw with Randy and Chris going 5-1, I mean, sometimes the deck runs well. And, and when you're running well, that is that is one of the best decks to play, right? Because it kills you on turn oh, one yeah. at a higher percentage than everything else. Absolutely. It, it's a higher variance deck, but when variance works, it works. And yeah. unlike a number of the prior decks that sought to win on the first turn, it's a lot more consistent. It lives off the top a lot better. Yeah, it, I... I mean, I lost a game to Randy where we I stopped his first barrage of spells, and it cost me a lot because I had to use you know force of will and imperial seal to to get a counter that sort of thing. And a couple turns of top decking later, I still lost because the deck has a lot of draw sevens. Once it's got its mana going, it's got a lot of live draws. Oh yeah, once the academy arrives, so much of the deck will just win you the game on the spot. Yeah. So I don't expect Kai to have a whole lot, except maybe like more pact of negations. The problem is Pact Negation lines up very poorly against Duress, so it's kind of unfortunate if you, you draw a hand of one or two packs and, and Tom's Disruption is all Duresses. I, I agree. Uh, it's, it's a very limited card. It's good at resolving your spell on your turn, not so much at other things, until you get the yeah. Academy, and then it actually becomes a legitimate counter spell. Yeah, we've seen some packs get paid for this, this particular uh, event. It, it really feels like the whole Belcher deck is sort of a werewolf deck from Innistrad <laughs> in the sense that when the deck flips, when it gets its academy, all of its cards become much better than they otherwise would have been. So this is this is an interesting hand for Tom. Assuming Kai keeps his mm. seven, which I think he will, it's not a guarantee, but I, you know, Kai's on potentially a turn one time twister if he wants to go all in. I like Kai's hand here. I, I would be would, surprised if he didn't keep it. Would you keep Martel's hand? It's no lands, but it's got mind break trap and mental misstep. I guess the answer is no. I guess not. With one land, that last hand from Martel was incredible, but... Oh, absolutely. Of course, uh, this hand's a little less incredible. It doesn't have the... It doesn't have the sec the blue card for the Force of Will, so... You don't have any turn zero disruption, but you do have a explosive hand with Lotus Doomsday, and if you draw a blue card, you have a Force of Will on turn two, maybe? Yep. Or rather, you your, your turn one, Kai's turn two. I don't think you can leverage that into a turn two win, can you? Uh, if you drew like an ancestral or if you drew a card draw spell, you, you probably could. Like I, okay. I, I would say, I would say even like a preordain can probably set up like some kind of win. Actually, preordain's tough because you only get to draw one card, but an ancestral I think would certainly do it. It it may well. The difficulty with Tom's hand is that the second fetch land won't get him a land if he doomsdays. Yeah. Well, Tom's about to get um, a new seven. So. I guess the hand is neither here nor there. So. Yeah. This hand's much better for Tom. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I would keep that hand. Yeah, this is... I mean, that, that Time Twister was incredible for Tom. Kai did hit Ancestral, so Kai is definitely not done taking his turn yet, but Tom can force the Ancestral Pictin Gitaxian Probe and still go turn one, Misty, Fast Bond, Land, Gush, Preordain, and that sets up some interesting possibilities, too. It does. So this, this is going to put Kai in the awkward position of having four mana on the table and a Pact of Negation in his hand. Yeah, Kai's not going to be able to protect... Well, I'm not going to say not. He could protect Ancestral with Pact of Negation here if if uh, Tom goes to Force of Will it. I don't, I don't like that play very much <laughs> because he still has that second turn uh, Belcher. Yeah. And yeah, so, I, oh, oh, or he could pass the turn. It looks like what Kai's doing is he's going to wait a turn and try to fire it all off on the same turn to make his pact better. Okay. Like that, that's my assumption, at least. If he just waits... I, I mean, if Tom starts with a duress, then I think Kai would Ancestral in response, but otherwise Kai would rather go untap, cast map, cast Ancestral, cast Belcher, pact it. Yeah, it looks like this card's going to draw the Ancestral likely in hopes of hitting Mental Misstep from Kai. A turn one fast bond is it's really interesting because sometimes it's an absolute do nothing and other times perhaps in this case it's a critical spell that can end the game should it resolve yeah in this case I mean it's not necessarily going to end the game but I do think Tom has a really good shot of either finding a duress or you know a null rod if he really wants to get right. deep just something he's going to get to see five additional cards here and have a total of a uh, four mana 
minus one for the purity. And so th three mana and five cards, that's that's mm -hmm. a dangerous amount to give a vintage deck. It is, especially when any gush is going to result in two more cards and two more mana. Yeah. I think I might have actually floated black off that underground sea just because you end up uh, making tons of blue mana with this fast bond already. Hmm. Uh, it, Tom can still get to two black if he wants. He can. Yeah. Well, now he can. Um, yeah, I, I would. I, I would have floated black to begin with, just so if you hit Doomsday here, you can mm -hmm. still win. But that makes sense. If he had done that now, he would have been able to cast it, but he can't currently. Yeah. But he still has, as we discussed, five cards to look at. Yeah. And he has Nature's Claim online, which is not irrelevant in this matchup. No, it. It's interesting. He could Nature's Claim, but Kai's on four mana. Taking him to three is not that important. What he could do is hold Nature's Claim and hope that Kai plays a Belcher and has to pass the turn, which happens a decent amount of the time. It does. There's a big difference from four to seven mana. So Tom preordaining here. Looking for... Doomsday, actually, I'd probably put Doomsday in the bottom here. You can't cast it immediately. Cast it. Right. So, really looking for disruption cards like Duress, Null Rod, uh, Force of Will. Well, Force of Will is not actually that great right now either. Or more, more gush, card draw. I mean, yeah, more gushes is, is great. If if Tom finds Yawgmoth's Will here, he could just end the game. Yeah. Uh, and he found Doomsday, so that's very interesting. I, I like floating black at this point. Well, now you have to float black. I think you yeah. one or two before, but uh, now now it's basically mandatory. So I don't know what other card he put on top to go with it that might have warranted the Doomsday. Dark Ritual. So it yeah. looks like he can Doomsday and then be done with his turn. Yeah, that's not impressive because, let's see, Kai can next turn play... Um, Monolith. Four, five, nah. so you'll... Actually, Kai, the Kai looks like he's got exactly enough mana to Belch Academy. Three, four, five, six. Yep, it looks like he has exactly. Yeah. So it looks like with this line, Kai's going to win. That's well, Tom, Tom has an out here, which is... And I'm not saying this is the right play, but this is Tom's... If Tom knew Kai's hand, he would do this, is to Nature's Claim one of the Chrome Moxes right now. That's true. Yeah. And again, I, I don't I'm not endorsing that. I'm not saying if Tom doesn't do that he screwed up, because that's definitely not the case. But that is from what we can see, Tom's only out. And it's Yes. So what do you think about the decision earlier to pitch the Gataxian probe? I, I like, really I like, like knowing the hands here. I do, but I, I like that because if you really need this fast bond to resolve, and if Kai ancestrals into misstep, you end up having to use the force, but then Kai just drew a bunch of cards. So oh. I probably would have forced pitching Gitaxian Probe. I probably would not have kept Doomsday on top for this exact reason. And right. honestly, even if Tom had floated black mana, he uh, he would not have been able to go off, I don't think, because he had to gush. Right, he has no other draw. Oh, no, he had to, he had to gush in... Yeah, he had to gush to generate the mana anyway. So he wouldn't have had a draw spell. So I don't think right. that changes anything. So I I probably would have started Tom's turn by just casting a taxi and probe for two life and seeing Kai's hand. If I I'm going to have a turn, especially a big turn like this, I really like to know what my opponent's doing so I can set up how to play around it. Yeah, I, I, I would have also started with, with probe. I think that it's the safest play there because Kai does have some amount of disruption. The, right. Ultimately, you end up in the same spot. I think the biggest difference is that I, I don't think you can keep Doomsday on top. Like, keep drawing Doomsday, then gushing and hoping to draw a black source and a card draw spell seems like a lot. I don't know. Do we know that he kept it on top? Or did he did he just throw two in the bottom and then the top card is Doomsday? No, we don't We don't know. I mean, we, we'll, we'll take the game log. log. Actually, it looks like he bought it both. He yeah, so okay, so, so he did just happen to draw the Doomsday. Yeah. So now Tom, basically wondering if he should just cast Doomsday and pass the turn with like a Tropical Island up. Seems fine, though. Kai's actually okay against that because Kai's going to presumably have enough mana next turn to pay for Pact if Kai doesn't win on the immediate turn. In which case, Kai could Pact Tom's first attempt to go off with Doomsday, which often does win you the game. That's true. Um, it looks like 
Go to draw seven, just be lethal here. If Tom plays out Doomsday, uh, five, six. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. If, I guess... if Tom Doomsdays and plays out all of his land, I think that a draw seven will kill him. Well, yeah, Tom will just have five cards in his deck anyway, so. I, I guess, yeah, he'll have to shuffle, and he's going to play out some amount of land, it looks like here. Hmm. Yeah, so it looks like Tom's going to cast Doomsday. I mean, I think you do cast Doomsday once you're in the spot. Like, right, I, I agree. It's you're not passing like the turn no matter what. You might as well make it so you top deck next turn. Right. You might as well set up the win for next turn instead of putting an unknown on top. And there are all sorts of things Kai can do to win the game if you do this, but there are all sorts of things Kai could do to win the game if you don't do this. Yeah, I, I think no matter what Tom's... The Doomsday's not doing anything if you don't cast it, and you're. this is just making your top card better, though. I don't believe Tom's going to survive to see this. <laughs> I'm curious about what he's going to set up here. Uh, the, the first priority is to try to not die to one counter. I don't know if that's possible. The, I guess you could do some sort of card draw into Yogwell plus a Duress, and that way if they counter a card draw, you can just draw the Yogwell. And mm -hmm. if they let it resolve, you duress, Yogg will do something to kill them. Yeah, that Whether... is made better by having the Dark Ritual in hand. Yeah. Though, again, regardless of what Tom gets here, unless he casts Nature's Claim on one of those Moxes, he is going to die to Kai's map, get, or Monolith, map, get Tolerian Academy, play Tolerian Academy, play Belcher, use it. Right. And if, if Kai does lose one of his Mox and it, Still looks like he's going to be able to play his, uh, to get out Academy and play the Belcher, Pact of Negation, whatever Tom does, and then win on his upkeep with the trigger on the stack, right? Yes. I, I, I mean, even if Kai didn't have enough mana, yeah, so Kai could do that. Though, yeah. at, at that point, since Tom has used the Nature's Claim, Kai doesn't have to protect Belcher anymore. Yeah, it's going to be tough. So, Tom, again, I think some sort of card draw followed by a Yawgmoss will, followed by, like, Duress, maybe li at that point, Lab Maniac. Maybe, oh, you don't yeah. even, maybe you don't even need the Yogg will. You could just do card draw and a Duress, Lab Maniac, card draw. But, all, I think, all uh, yeah. I like your, I think your plan of having card draw into Yawgmoss will is good because it means that if the, if the first card gets countered, the Yawgmoss will will still let you win on the second turn. As opposed yeah. to just drawing a duress. Yeah, you're right. And All right, I like your line there. <laughs> Tom uh, potentially typing out what, what he's looking at. But the funny thing is, uh, Kai's probably thinking he's dead here. Like Kai doesn't <laughs> Kai doesn't know that Tom doesn't have anything to kill him. So Kai's probably thinking like, oh, wow, that was insane. And you know, I got turn one. But what Kai doesn't know is Tom's going to select a bunch of cards, pass the turn, and then you're just going to untap and belt him to death. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Wow. It's a very interesting mind game at this point. Neither player knows what the other has. Yeah. Though, in this case, that lack of knowledge isn't changing anyone's plays. And, again, unless... Unless something very strange happens, I think Kai's going to win this game. Because as you said, if Tom takes his only out of not dying this turn and kills one of the Moxen, Kai can just go Monolith, Map, Belcher, Go, pack your first attempt to go off, untap, upkeep, pack, trigger on the stack, shoot you. Or pay for the pack, shoot you, whatever. <laughs> right, right. I mean, at this point, I guess Tom is hoping that Kai boarded in a Mishra's workshop or something. I don't know. Uh... Not, not, not for this matchup, probably. <laughs> no, no. But I, I don't know what else Tom could do to avoid losing here. Yeah. And of course, Kai gets a draw step too. So, I mean, I think he mm -hmm. looks good without even any of the cards that he draws for his turn. But he does get to see another card, which might make it things even safer. It does. We see the, uh, the cards moving around in Kai's hand. <laughs> yes. Tom still resolving Doomsday. Doomsday is a tough spell to resolve. I'm not gonna lie. No, I, it really is. I tend to 
to play fairly fairly quickly, but when I was playing Doomsday, it was it was tough. I, I definitely slowed down because it is it is hard to to make sure you're doing everything correctly. I, I agree. I think the the VSL has uh, certainly shown us that sometimes players take a long time to cast Doomsday. We've certainly seen that. Um, actually, when I was playing against Kai, I had a turn where I Doomsdayed and passed. When I actually had a could have killed that turn had I found a different line, though. In that case, Kai was playing Delver and didn't have any creatures in place, so it's not like I was going to die. It's it's very difficult to play. I think Brainstorm is a very skill-intensive card because you look at your seven cards and you pick two to put back. With this card, you look at your library and your graveyard and you pick five that you want to put back in any yeah. order. Well, and they're the the five that you get the whole to play the rest of the game with, as opposed to right. Brainstorm. Sometimes if you mess up a Brainstorm, you can still win. If you mess up a Doomsday, it's pretty hard to win. Agreed. Agreed. So, Tom's still trying to figure out the Doomsday stack that potentially wins through counter. It's trivial to find one that wins without any disruption here, but Tom does want to make sure that he can win through something because he might as well. He doesn't think he's untapping anyway. I, I would not expect. Mm. Like when you against a Belcher deck that has four cards in hand. I yeah I, I I don't think and four mana already I don't think I'm in good shape to survive. So the interesting part is now is Tom gonna run the Nature's Claim? Ooh, I mean without knowing the hand that would be a really difficult thing to do. Yeah. I, I mean, it is tough to know whether you want to uh, want to just run that out because, oh, it looks like he is. He's clicked on the nature's claim. There it goes. All right. So now, if uh, your prediction is correct, which well, it looks like Tom may not be casting it. If your prediction is correct, uh, I do think that Kai is going to end up with a Belcher in play and passing the turn, assuming he doesn't draw anything. Right. And then, right and, then, nothing. and then pacting whatever Tom plays on his turn. Right, and then Kai can untap and win with the lose the game trigger on the stack, or or pay for it and then still belch. <laughs> he'll, that, he'll, that's he'll, also fun, right? He'll, By the end, he'll have an academy. An academy of the tops for four. Um, I don't think he would need one more mana source to pay for it. Yeah, well, he's gonna oh, yeah, first, it's gonna tap for five because he's got the he's gonna have. Time Twister here and um, deck Tom Martell on Tom's upkeep, right? No, 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 that wouldn't quite work. Tom has two, would have two cards left. Okay. Tom would have, so, yeah, he has, Tom has a total of nine cards, so it seems a lot riskier to cast diminishing returns. It does, it does. If he didn't have that graveyard, that would work. So if you're Kai, you, you probably lead with map? Or do you lead with Monolith? Is there a compelling reason to lead with one over the other? I mean, map's going to get misstepped no matter when you cast oh. it. So, and I like I, leading with the Monolith so that you can preserve the blue mana. Yeah. I mean, you can't put Tom on doing too much. Maybe you have put him on a Force of Will? Uh. Uh oh. <laughs> Chat points out diminishing returns is optional. You don't have to draw the seven uh, full seven. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen anyone choose not to, but for whatever reason, you know, because when they worded cards back then, it was essentially at random, like <laughs> stuff like that. Like right. the small details were, you know, varied wildly. It is optional how many cards you want to draw, up to seven cards for just. <laughs> right, <laughs> because I'm sure they didn't want you decking your opponent with this card back in um, whatever year in the 90s alliances came out in. Yeah, that's awesome. 95, 97, and uh, so I, th this is probably legitimately why they worded it that way. Yeah. It's not how it would be templated these days, I'll just put, put it that no. way. No. So, Kai, deciding if, I mean, his other play... And I think what he's thinking about here is whether he wants to play around misstep, is he could just cast Belcher. You know that that might actually be stronger. Yeah. Because if you just cast Belcher, mm -hmm. you then pass the turn, but you're passing no matter what. And then if Tom, when Tom goes off, you packed, and then we use your play of shooting, oh no, the Academy is still in your deck. But Tom's at right, six. Right, right. 
Six life is not a lot. <laughs> but it's not deterministic. And uh, I I like going for it here. You can always you can always well, I guess you can't really pack a mental mist up there because there's probably something lethal. Yeah. Well, what what do you like more in general? Uh, do you like lines of play that are deterministic or do you like saying the word deterministic? Well, they're both really fun. Yes. And um, one thing about commentary is that I get to say the word deterministic deterministically. <laughs> it's true. Uh, no one's impacting your decision whether to say that. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I, I enjoy that. There's a, uh, there's a, a predictable deterministic path to being able to say that, which is fun. Yeah. Um, The skill, of course, is finding appropriate times to say it, which you have, because, well, uh, you know, exactly. at, in games like this, it is actually a, a relevant point whether, you know, which 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 path Kai wants to take. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, getting around aside, I actually find it's very often the case that the first thing you should do on a turn in Magic is determine if you have a certain clear path to victory. That's true. Uh, not doing that sometimes just leads to misplays. And here goes Ancestral Recall, which Kai, I'm sure, is gonna is gonna pack the negation. So seems yeah, it seems kind of insane not to not to pack this. Yeah, I, I can't imagine Kai not packing. He packs and they should do it here. Yeah, it, it's funny. Both players ended up passing the turn with it when, and the other player I think was probably somewhat surprised by that. But in both cases, uh, <laughs> they did not get to kill in the subsequent turn. And, and there's the belching. Tom gets to at least see Kai's deck, but uh, right, he goes to negative thirty-nine. <laughs> he does so at a heavy cost. <laughs> It's kind of like Necropotence, but instead of drawing cards, you see the cards in your opponent's deck. <laughs> yeah, it's a reverse Necropotence. So. Kai takes game two. Tom's on the play. And, I mean, obviously in Vintage, being on the player draw is huge. That's just is. One, of the, one, of, one of the features of the format. Playing against Belcher when you have cards like Duress in your deck, that, that, is, that is big. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I think this favors Tom. Yeah, I'd say the player on the play is is favored, and Tom is more favored when he's on the play than Kai is when Kai's on the play. That makes sense. That makes sense. I think that uh, Kai is probably going to hope to. I, some builds, not all builds of Belcher, have mental misstep in the sideboard. I think that if Kai has it, it would be especially appropriate here to not only thwart the combo that Tom has, but also the duresses. Yeah, and. Uh, even though mental missteps kind of a necessary evil in the in the Doomsday deck or the Belcher deck, both actually, you you do need them to fight the cards that, that they're good against. Absolutely, I think mental missteps a card I've been playing four of since twenty eleven. I know not everyone's on four copies, but it just does so much against all the non workshop matchups. Yeah, and it looks like we have not one but two duress effects on the very first turn from Tom Martel <laughs> with a preordain. With a with a bonus prayer to end that he can also cast, so that's a pretty exciting turn. Yeah, this Kai is a fantastic has, turn. Kai has um, uh, a hand that really wants to draw an academy. <laughs> also known as a as a goblin charbelcher hand. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, but yes, Kai's Kai's opening hand. If these if this is on six right now, yeah, he's Kai's six card hand is not good. He. It's not. It can, he can generate one mana because the Mox Opal isn't even on, though he does have Force of Will. I think this hand's very borderline on the draw, but it is not, not the kind of hand you, you really want to be looking at. No, it's Tom, not. Tom's hand is absurd, though. Yeah. Tom hand, Tom's hand is going to rip apart whatever is in Kai's hand. So what do you take here? Assuming Kai keeps this, which he looks like he has. Looks No, actually, I don't, I don't, he has not yet. Uh, if, if Kai did keep it and your duress resolves, probably just take like, you end up taking maybe Chrome Mox and Force of Will, or the two cards you end up taking. Do. If you take the two Moxes, that's all the that mana. But you could also take both of the threats. Yeah. If you take Belcher and Diminishing Returns, then Kai can't do very much. He's still on Force. Yeah. Um, 
I could see taking force just because you're gonna you're gonna you know want to set up a Yagwell and Kai's not very close to killing you, so you don't. I mean, yeah. Look, now Kai mult to a pretty bad five. Um, one mana. I, I guess you got to keep it on five, but now Tom can just take like Mox Pearl Force and and be in pretty good shape, I think. Or he could take Diminishing Returns Goblin Charbelcher. Or what Tom could do, since he knows the thought he's going to resolve, he can duress, take a card, and then go Sapphire Preordain and see what he's just setting up. I like that. I like that. Yeah, because if if you think that you're going to win the game with Yogwell on, like, say, turn three, like if you see a Black Lotus and or something like that, or a, or just a Demonic Tutor, then I, I could see wanting to take Force of Will for sure. So I guess... I, at this point, things that could go badly for what could well, I guess Kai could draw a black lotus and draw seven new cards. Yeah, if you leave him with both Mox Pearl and Diminishing Returns, which I think is unlikely, then yes, Kai could draw a Lotus and draw seven cards. So I, I think you want one of those. And it yeah, looks I'll like Mox Pearl got taken. I think that makes a lot of sense. I like taking the pearl, and I like casting Preordain before casting Thought Seizes. You're not going to get Absolutely. you're not going to get forced here, so you might as well get yourself some more information. Right. Tom is also will, yeah really close. Really powerful. Yeah, Tom's really close to casting a value Yogwell too. He's like a fetch line and a Lotus Petal away from going Yogwell replay land duress you duress you Preordain, which is a great play. That's you know still a three for one. Absolutely, absolutely, and Yogwell also enables all sorts of. Uh, combo turns here. Yeah. Yeah, Tom's got a ton of live draws in his deck. He can't cast Gush, and he can't cast Doomsday, so two of the like signature cards in the deck aren't quite on, but he's really close to being able to do both those things. He's got two black, and he's got one blue, or one island, so if he sees either Gush, like, if if he saw, like, a Gush and a land, well... <laughs> or he could have an Ancestral. I, yeah. I still like the thought seeds here, but next year he'll get yeah. to enjoy that one. Yeah, I don't think you want to Ancestral and have it get forced because with the Yoggle in hand, Ancestral is so good. Every card you draw is like one and a half cards because you get to replay them. And there goes four. So Kai has no live draws for his turn. Yeah, Kai can't do anything turn one. I mean, and <laughs> drawing Tezzeret the Seeker. won't be able to do anything turn two. No. Yeah, I would probably start by drawing three cards. If Kai drew exactly Force of Will or Mental Misstep, then so be it. But Ancestral and gives you so much more information on Preordain. See, like now that you've found the second blue mana, you, you you know, or second island, you know whether you can keep Gush on top. Right. This this gives Tom more information. Yeah. Basically, I don't even know what you take here. I. I'm leaning towards diminishing returns, but I could see you taking Time Vault because one of the mo maybe one of the most likely scenarios is like some weird sequence of plays in involving Kai drawing Key and Lotus and another mana source. Right, right. But I guess you even have Mental Misstep for Key, so yeah, diminishing returns is my first inclination. Yeah. So if if you're Tom and you brick here, I don't think you cast Yogwell this turn. I think you wait one more up. Oh. Uh, that's the opposite of working. <laughs> yeah, that's just the best card. All right, well, now you cast Yogwell <laughs> as essentially a draw seven. You, you, Tom, Tom's going to mind twist Kai and draw like five more cards. <laughs> yeah, that's. This is a good turn for Tom. It's not a bad turn. Oh. This is this is my favorite kind of Yogwell turn. The kind where you don't win, but you just. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, the value Yogwell. You don't win the yeah. game. So Kai can't a lot of concede, though. Maybe he could. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, had Tom not peeled Lotus that turn, Tom's still ab well above 90%, well above 95% even to win this game. This just makes it a little faster and a little flashier. <laughs> it's very flashy. Um, yeah. So you're going to take Grim Monolith, maybe like Time Vault, or you could take Tezzeret, so future Force of Wills d don't do as much. It doesn't matter a ton. Like... I, I like leaving him with just Time Vault. Yeah. Because you can answer Key and then you can answer Tinker. Yeah, this is this is gross. <laughs> this is very uh, vintagey. 
vintage vintages. Oh, well, sometimes you draw fast bond. Yeah, so now... Tom knows... I mean, the Gush is going to get exiled here, but I still think you end up going with this because Tom hasn't played a land yet, so he can Gush, replay Trop, mm. replay fast bond, and then just after he drew the, draws the two, cast Preordain and Thoughtseize, and then that should set him up, I mean, to be more than good, in good enough shape to win the game. Yeah, I, I, I think... <laughs> At this point, it's it's whatever Tom feels like doing. He's going to win the game. You can uh, you can have fun with this. Yeah, I feel like too much of Kai's VSL experience has been him watching his opponents do things while he can't cast anything. <laughs> but well, that's that's true. He he was on the other end of that, getting belched even in the exhibition game. Yeah, yeah it's true. That said, I don't have a lot of sympathy for the Belcher deck. No, no, the Belcher deck is 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 you know, is the the side of evil in every match it's in, of course. It's Belcher so maybe, versus Dredge, and I, I don't know what I want. Uh, I, I would I, okay, fine. I, I would root for maybe Belcher a in that Magic in that Online match. server crash or something. <laughs> uh, short of that, Belcher's the bad guy. So, Tom. Finishing the full, you know, Nicole Bolas ultimate where his opponent discards seven and he draws seven. I think that's what that does. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, ending up ending the turn with, what, three, four, five, eight, nine mana total, a force of will, three mental missteps, and a, and a ponder, which is not guaranteed victory, but it's about as close as you can get and still be playing the game. You're saying it's not deterministic, right? I'm saying it's not deterministic, yes. I, I use the wrong word. Though I think that uh, next turn Tom would be able to cast actual legend Nicole Balas should he draw him. It appeared he didn't draw that card this no, turn. he drew an island. I mean, I oh. guess Tom can, like, miss on Ponder, shuffle, and miss for, like, four more turns, and then maybe Kai plays one spell this game. Um, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. It's not likely, but... So what's the minimum number of draw steps that Kai would need here? He needs to draw a land, and then... Technically, Kai can cast a spell in two turns. If he draws, like, Academy Mox or Mox Mox, and he can cast a Time Bolt. But okay. So It's not super exciting, though. So, I was going to say that the best possible scenario for Kai involves Ancestral, but that's not resolving. So... Wow, so... Tom must have hit a good ponder, because he pondered, drew Preordain, and then didn't play anything, including his fetch land, which indicates to me that his next card is good as well. You wanted to leave Force up? Oh, well, that's one reason that you might want to keep your Preordain in your hand. Yeah, now Tom has uh, multiple paths to victory that will uh, succeed. I don't know if there's a better way to describe that, but th there's th there's multiple mm. paths to victory that there's no, no, no question about what happens. <laughs> so. Well, looks like Kai didn't want to find out. Indeed. So Tom wins the match going to uh, two and five. So it looks like right. uh, the battle for last is not over yet. No, I'm actually not out of contention for that battle. You're not of con out of contention for last or first. Right. <laughs> So, so there's nothing deterministic about this. No, that's in fact the opposite. Uh, but we're going to have two, two, more, uh, two more weeks after this of regular season. Of course, we still have one match left this today. And mm -hmm. then after that, we're going to likely have more than four people qualified for the end of to the end of season, in which case there will be playoffs. But uh, that will depend on how these next couple matches go. Yeah. I'm looking forward to finding out. I'm looking forward to... Seeing what you're doing, and uh, <laughs> not the least of which because I'll be playing you, but uh, also because I want to see what what you've managed to construct for this, what contraption you've assembled. We'll see if I've uh, assembled one contraption or twice as many contraptions whenever I assemble contraptions. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with uh, myself against Eric Froelich in just a couple minutes here. All right. 